Hello everyone and welcome to our first series of Europa Universalis IV Rule Britannia. I am TJ. In the background we have Brianna and Casey the Lord Dog. Hello! Um, Hello! And we're gonna try out Scotland. Um, I, I tried, I tried so hard to make the Isles work. Um, because I'd love to start as the Lordship of the Isles and then become, like, the Master of the North Sea, but it is... It is not a remotely viable, like, this is, this is, like, harder than Ryukyu. This is, like, this is, like, playing Ryukyu if, um, Japan could just decide to revoke your provinces and there's nothing you can do about it. Like, Scotland will literally be like, yep, I'm gonna, uh, take that province from you, thanks so much. Um, so it's not really super viable, so we're gonna go with the classic, uh, James Stewart-led Scotland, um and see how we can do here. They are one of the nations that got a new a new um, mission tree. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, by 1444, Scotland has stood steadfast, fighting for and winning its independence from its would-be English overlords. Scotland threw off the yoke of English rule after Robert the Bruce routed the English at Bannockburn in 1314 and has since consolidated its control over Northern Britain. Scotland's protection comes not only from its brave armies, but also from the Auld Alliance with France. This agreement obligates France to come to Scotland's aid should England once again try to sub subjugate them. War is an ever-present possibility as the marcher lords on both sides of the border threaten to escalate the conflict through frequent skirmishes and a tendency to opportunistically switch sides for the sake of better raiding opportunities. Um, that's something that's kind of interesting about this this marcher area. Um, it We tend to think in terms of this, like, modern nationalism of, you know, Scotland is on this side and England is on this side. Um, but there's actually, um, like in, in Northumbria and in the lowlands of Scotland, especially in the medieval period, it was not really that clearly delineated. And, you know, we're coming out of the Middle Ages here. 1444 is kind of the very tail end of the Middle Ages. Um, so these strong national identities have not really solidified yet. There are lots of little, you know, Castellans and dudes in this area who maybe wouldn't necessarily think of themselves as like, I am proudly Scottish or I am proudly English. You know, they kind of, they, they're, they're willing to go which way the winds blow. Um, and, you know, the, the cultural, there are a lot of cultural and linguistic, um, similarities and kind of a cultural linguistic continuum when you look at the north of what we think of as England and the south of what we think of as Scotland. Uh, so that's a little bit of history lesson for the <laughs> start of this series here. How could we how could we do a lore sworn video without that? Um, yeah, so it's taken many years for Scotland to incorporate the Highlands into the kingdom. The Middle Ages saw the annexation of formerly autonomous kingdoms of Moray home of the usurper Macbeth, who you might know from high school English, and the expansion of feudal institutions into the northern mainland. The integration of the Highlands would serve Scotland well as it became a staging ground for recruitment in the war against Edward Longshanks. The Hebrides were wrested away from the former kingdom of the Isles under Alexander II, and not even the intervention of the King of Norway could halt the Scottish assault. Um, so yeah, these islands out here... Um, this is actually where a lot of Brianna's ancestors co come from. They were Norwegians who settled out in, in the Hebrides um, and were eventually taken by the Scottish king from yeah. Norway. Uh, king James II has plans to further extend the Scottish domain in the surrounding Orkney and the Shetland Islands, which are currently held by Norway, currently subject to Denmark under the Kalmar Union. Taking on the full might of Scandinavia would be challenging, but perhaps a diplomatic solution will present itself. England and Scotland have squabbled over the Isle of Man for centuries. Currently, the English have the upper hand, but an opportunistic ruler might exploit their preoccupation with fighting France to seize it for themselves. The House of Stuart has ruled Scotland for less than a century, but they have ruled well. If Scotland is to be able to turn the tide against England, the Stuarts could one day rule all of the British Isles. So... Uh, here's the situation we find ourselves in. Um, we have a pretty good army. Um, we, we do have a vassal over here in the Isles that we will eventually be looking to annex. 
and our new mission tree, I will pull that up here. So our, our first three missions, uh, Global Dominance, North Sea has to be the highest value trade node in the world, and we have to be the strongest trade power in the North Sea. That's unlikely, <laughs> to be quite honest with you. Uh, the Old Alliance, Scotland and France maintain close ties, promising mutual aid against English aggress aggression. As the conflict between nations only seems to be escalating, Scotland must renew its diplomatic ties. So France is guaranteeing our independence, but we want to turn that into a full alliance. So the first thing we're going to do is start improving relations with France. Um, we can get a royal marriage. Um, and actually, they would already accept an alliance. So that's pretty good. Um, the other thing that I would like to do, uh, we do want to improve relations with the Isles. We'll go ahead and get a, a royal marriage with the McDonald's. Um, I'm also going to rival Denmark and England because we want their stuff. Seems pretty logical. The other thing I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to get an alliance with, which one of the Irish miners was it? Probably Kildare. Um, Kildare, they're, they're on the border with England and um, they have fairly high development. Actually, was there anyone else that had higher military development? Because that's really what matters. We're not going to ally anyone in Ulster, because as, you, as you're going to see, we're going to get a mission to get claims on Ulster. Uh, but Kildare, we're not, we're not going to have a problem with them in the immediate future. Um, and they have an advantage over France as an ally in that they can actually get troops to us while we're fighting England. So I would highly recommend, uh, if you're trying this run yourself, based on my, my test run and how well that went, uh, try to get an alliance maybe with Kildare... Um, Maybe with Thalmond as well. Um, just so you can have some allies who are close by enough to actually help you. Because, like, Castile isn't really going to intervene, um, I don't believe. I mean, we probably will get an alliance with them eventually, but they're, they're more concerned with fighting France than England. Um, so France is going to be our great power ally, um, and then we'll try to get some smaller alliances going on with some of these Irish miners. Uh, let us see here. We want to build up to our force limit. Four cavalry is plenty, so we'll just build up the rest of infantry. Um, I'm going to mothball our transport fleet. I'm going to send these guys to protect trade in the North Sea. We also, for some reason, start without our merchants being placed. Uh, there's really no steering we can do right now, so I'm just going to collect from the two trades nodes that are near to us that we can actually get some money from. Um, the other thing I want to immediately do is I want to recruit a general from the nobility uh, so that we have a good general to fight England with. That's very good. Four shock, three maneuver. That's worth <laughs> making a bookmark save here just in case... Uh, we get a crash or something, I wouldn't want to lose a general that good. We also get, I think, plus one general shock from Scottish traditions. Yeah. Um, I also want to make sure that our allies are aware of our claims. So we definitely want all of the Scottish marches. We also want the entire area of Ulster. Okay, so that... That should cover our immediate claims. All right, um, so we're building up. We've got our ships doing what, are, what they need to do. Um, I'm gonna stage our army in Ayrshire. And uh, well, let's go ahead and speed five it. Great, uh, diplomacy. We want to offer an alliance to France as soon as we can. Hundred Years War is probably going to heat up again quite soon, and we'll just get as much drill in as we can in the short amount of time we have. Getting some CBs. Okay, so... War is already happening. <laughs> so we're going to stop drilling. Um, we're going to make sure... France now does not want an alliance. So we're probably going to have to wait on that. 
which is fine because we need time to get our armies mustered anyway. Cool, cool. Uh, Perth has become the seat of strong aristocrats. So, uh, Mary of Arbuthnot has become our consort. She has really good stats. Okay. It's important that we get in on this war. So hopefully France will accept an alliance from us. There we go. And they are offering us a call to arms, so we're going to go down to speed three. Perfect. Awesome. We're going to go siege Cumbria. The Highlanders should show up momentarily here. We're also going to tell our vassal to come help us out. There's the Highlanders. It's going to put us over our force limit. That's okay. We'll consolidate down some regiments once we uh, lose some guys. Mission fulfilled. The Ald Alliance. So we get... So this basically the way this works now is that when we complete an obje objective, it opens up the way for our next set of objectives. So we're going to gain cl permanent claims on the Isles, on the Highlands, on Shetland, the Scottish Marches, and Ulster. So into Ireland, we just need to control all areas in Ulster, which are now highlighted. So it's just these three provinces here. Advance the frontier. Uh, take some land off England. May happen, may not. We'll see. Um, and then claiming the Northern Isles, we're going to have to go to war with Denmark to get Shetland and the Orkneys. Uh, Faith's Bastion, become Defender of the Faith and have 100% religious unity in the... It has to not be the Age of Discovery. Eh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes with that one. All right. So here come our Highlanders. And if we're lucky, the War of the Roses will fire during this mess as well. He knows to follow us, right? Okay, they're going to try to... Where are they headed? Northumberland? All right, let's decide where we want this fight to happen. Ideally, we'd want them to be crossing a river. Ayrshire, Cumbria, and the East March. Okay, so if we go to West March, they're gonna have to, they're gonna have to really work for their, their dinner here. Okay, so they're gonna try to take that back. Maybe they'll maybe they'll try to attack us once they take it back. Let's see. And our allies are now no. Hang on. Focus supportive. I don't need you to go conquer the pale. <laughs> that's not uh, that's not of the utmost importance right now. Alright, so they know better than to attack us into hills over a river, which is nice. Let's see... Let's see if we can trick them into a battle here. Okay, they're locked in. So they're taking minus two, minus two. Their general is... Richard Plantagenet, he has 243. We also have 243. Uh, so this could this could really go either way. I think a lot of it's gonna come down to dice rolls. We pulled it off! Plus five war score. Alright, awesome. Uh, so they lost uh, about ten thousand men, we lost uh, about nine thousand men. Um, born to the saddle, caval cavalry flanking ability. And they're about to march directly into us with their one stack that's going to get wiped. Um, we are now going to... We're going to consolidate some regiments. That should get us back under our force limit. And... 
I might end up taking out a loan to build some infantry. Yeah. We can deal with debt after the war is over. Don't worry about it. Okay. So we'll go retake Cumbria. Come on, War of the Roses. We want that War of the Roses action happening. I'm wondering if we put our fleets down by can, if we can... Um... <laughs> help break the English blockade and let the French land troops on the Isles, but frankly, I've never seen the French land troops on England during the Hundred Years' War before ever, so. Okay. We are going to probably want to go take the Isle of Man at some point, too. You know what? If nobody has claimed it yet... I'm also going to stake a claim on the pale, because we might as well take that if we can. Alright, if we can catch this guy before reinforcements show up, I think we can route him. Nice! Alright. So we're right at our force limit. We are going to need some more levies, so I'm going to uh, request some additional levies. And we'll call it D. The nobles are dangerously powerful, and I might come to regret that, but let's see. <laughs> Wait for him to lock in. Come help us. Come help us, McDonald's. Oh, shoot. Alright, well, we're gonna have to fall back. France, I believe, has the ticking war score, though. Yes, they do. England is being worn down. So we might have to hide behind our forts for a little bit. Um... And just hope that the War of the Roses fires. <laughs> so that is uh, that'll be our current plan. Let's see where we can stage these troops. That is going to have a good supply limit. We'll stage them in Perth, and we should be protected by the fort at Lothian. Once our army's replenished a little bit, we might see if we can try to dislodge them here in West March, because we'll get the hill bonus as long as we control the fort. But then if they sweep in with these guys, then that would be, that'd be difficult. Political crises may occur from time to time. They often involve the conflict between the ruler and the parliament, unrest among the nobility, or conflicts of interest between nobility and the merchants or religious leaders. Uh, since... The uh, king is righteous. We can lose a little bit of legitimacy and let him attempt to soften the impact. Miracle of life. In these dark days of war and death, a reminder of new beginnings can ease the pains of our people. Our great King James II and his noble queen consort Mary have been blessed with another child. The arrival of the babe has brought new hope and energy to the royal couple and, by extension, to their court and subjects. Many people dream that, the, that this child will grow up in a better, brighter future and that all the fighting will thus be worth it in the end. That is good. We will lose two, two war exhaustion, which brings us almost back to zero. So once this manpower is done trickling into our army, we'll see maybe what we can do with it. Air sure. Where are the river crossings here? There is a there is a river crossing into the east march from here. Wonder if we can bait them to attack us at Lothian. It's flat land, so we're not gonna get any kind of defensive bonus, but it might be nice anyway. 
Okay, so we've 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 summoned all of the able men of Scotland at this point. Everyone who can fight is on the battlefield. Uh, there's no uh, Hearts of Iron esque, you know, changing of. Uh... Actually, it might be smarter to attack them here. Let's see what we can do. Because they are taking quite a bit of attrition from the Siege of Westmarch. They've breached the castle. They have a lot of reinforcements nearby. So what I'm trying to figure out, what I'm trying to think through right now, just to give you an idea of my thought process. I could attack them in East March, which could cause them to abandon the siege and lose all of their siege progress. Which buys us more time for France to tick up the war score and just piece them out. Um, but if I do attack into West March, we will suffer no terrain penalties. They will suffer a terrain penalty because um, we control the fort there. Whereas if I attack into East March uh, from Lothian or Ayrshire, we will have the terrain penalty. Um, and they can double up on us and the battle will go worse. Um, even though it should reset the siege. So I think, I think we're going to go for the gambit. I think we're going to go for trying to upset the siege. Um, I think that's going to be smarter. So we'll wait for one or more, one or two more month ticks of manpower. Like if, if I see this go positive, like if there's a chance that we might lose the province okay so on the first of august we will attack all right so we got them to abandon the siege we are going to lose the battle but that should buy us some time There we go. It's exactly what I was hoping for. So, it's a tactical victory, it's a tactical defeat, but it might end up being a strategic victory. Um, and we'll just, we'll hang out up here in Perth, because they can't attack us without getting through the fort at Lothian. So we can hold on to that province a little bit longer. And we did inflict some casualties on them. Let's see what our war exhaustion is at. Yeah, We're fine. All, our entire alliance has high uh, war enthusiasm. They're down to seven there. They're sitting at 4.7% war exhaustion. Uh, only the Isles <laughs> is anywhere near them. So France has done all they can do on the continent. We're just waiting for war score to tick up at this point. And they're going to continue to take attrition as they uh, continue the siege. So, you probably will not muster a large enough army for the rest of the war to actually take them on. Times of need. Okay, so, borrow a general. We need more men for our army. So, the dynasty of our noble king, Stuart, is certainly a powerful one. Though James the or through James the Second, they rule our nation will do so for many years to come. However, even the great are sometimes in need of help. Thankfully, the Stuart family has tied strong bonds to other great powers, such as the MacDonald House, led by none other than Alistair, Lord of the Isles. His gracious wife Mary is a daughter of our own royal house uh, and an invaluable contact. Perhaps we should ask... Okay, hang on. Okay, so there's Mary Arbuth Arbuthnot, who is our consort. Uh, and her family is from one of the Scottish noble houses, but apparently there's also Queen Mary of the Isles, who is a daughter of our royal house, so we do have a royal bond to them. Okay. Yeah, let's ask for more men. <laughs> that might open up some options for us. See if the Isles has any more able-bodied guys, and you know they they can pull out of some of their castles or something to uh, help us out here. 
Also, if War of the Roses would fire, that would be awesome. Ah, when we married our married to the Hebridean Lord, we thought a strong bond had been formed between our countries. But we would never dishonor our part in this deal. Apparently, Lord Alistair has holds no such qualms. Mary's letter of response reached us today. Not only did Lord Alistair refuse our request, he also had the nerve to reproach us for our, our outrageous demands. Well, um, thousands of his men have already died in this war, so I can kind of see his perspective on it. I'm, I'm not entirely... Uh, <laughs> Not entirely callous to that. Uh, it's it's uh, it's not like he has not sacrificed to help us. And King James is now malevolent. So apparently King James got really mad about that. And now uh, friendship ended with the McDonald clan. Um, we, should, we should be buttering them up. We should also be buttering up like, I don't know, Castile probably. I shouldn't leave those diplomats idle. All right, well, more Englishmen will be dying of disease, which is always good. Ulster's insulted us, just you wait. We need about 15 and a half thousand men to resupply our armies. Which will be quite, quite a few months manpower. So I'm wondering if we are going to have a large enough army to buy a little more time. Because we do have an option to to ride to the East March and try to rest it back. The problem is if this 11.6k stack can beat us on their own, then they have no reason to have to abandon the siege. Um, and we're just basically handing them more war, war score. Um, but if I can bait them both to... Um, See if I do this. Is that going to tempt him? Is he going to be tempted to come after this army? Mm, we'll wait till a month ticks by. We did buy a lot of time, which is pretty cool. Um, see if we do this. What is what is their reaction going to be? <laughs> the reaction of our uh, friends from the Isles is going to be to run away. The McDonald clan are not proving themselves very true to the... Uh, the... Uh, cause of Scottish independence at this point. Okay. Actually, I think it says something about that in our mission. Um... Yeah, Revoke the Isles. Clan MacDonald, Lord of the Isles, have much influence amongst the Highland clans. Having already ri risen up in revolt several times in recent history, it's only a matter of time until they once again rally the Highlanders to resist Scottish rule. What's more, there are whispers of conspiracy with the English to divide our realm between the MacDonalds and the English king. Clearly, the MacDonalds are too dangerous to remain rulers of the Isles. So that's, that is a concern that we have at the moment. Um... They're not coming after us, interestingly. And they are losing more men to attrition, which is nice. Because that will... Yeah, their war enthusiasm is now low, and our entire alliance is at high, so... We're about to lose some war enthusiasm if we lose this castle. But, uh, yeah, we're up... Our ticking war score is getting so high that, it, like, at this point, the French are going to have to peace out pretty soon. Like, just, just peace them out. If you can't get troops over here, there's really no reason to continue making us uh, fight. So. Alright, so now they're marching. We want to make sure that we unite up with our boys here. I don't really know that we have an ability to cut them off. So we're just going to have to watch what their army's going to do. Now, could we bait them back into a fight at the castle? 
Yeah, that was a bad idea. That was a very bad idea. So we're gonna... We're gonna skedaddle out of there. This is winnable. Tensions between the nobles and the clergy. Uh, in feudal kingdoms, two castes within society held great power. The nobility and the clergy. Now it turns out a baron and the local monastery of his fee for bickering about who owns a rather large piece of land. These days the royal court is swamped with people yammering about divine right. The nobles claiming their divine right to rule the land and the clergy asserting their positions as the representatives of God on earth. The whole situation is growing rather unstable. The baron in question is inciting the other nobles against the clergy and questioning their right to hold any sort of temporal property. The prior of the monastery has brought in the archbishop on his side, who in turn threatens to go straight to Rome should you decide to side with the nobles. What shall we do? Um, so, we can piss off the papal state a lot. Um, or we can have a rebellion in the West March. <laughs> that would be great if there were Englishmen currently in the West March. Um, but they are not present there at the moment, so, um, I think we're just going to piss off the Poe. We're going to say you guys can find money elsewhere. Alright, we don't want to stack wipe here by any means, so we're going to, we're going to, we're going to head off this way. Could try to cause some trouble in uh, the north ones here, but uh, yeah, that's probably going to be a stack wipe. Well, we did what we could. We did what we could with the resources we had. Uh, let none say otherwise. National decisions are available. Okay, so we could we could declare the statute in restraint of appeals, um, raising the king to be the final authority on matters of religion. That makes a bunch of people mad at us, but we also get minus one unrest, plus five prestige, uh, and increases the loyalty of our clergy. Let's do it. Passing that statute and restraint of appeals. All right, there's literally nothing we can do at this point except wait for France to peace out. So we're going to uh, we're just gonna speed five it. England's going to occupy a bunch of shit, and our war exhaustion's going to go up. Renounce their claims on man. No. We're not going to separate peace. This is why I was trying to get an alliance with some Irish miners before France dragged us into the war, but, uh, yeah. Not going to happen. Just hoping France has the good sense to peace out of the war before our war exhaustion gets too horribly high that we have rebellions everywhere. Um, let's see. Kildare, I think, is who I was courting for an alliance. How many open Diplo slots do I have? Two out of four. So Kildare... Who else would make a good ally? Seven, six, Lion, Thomond. Are they are they friends with Kildare, Ulster, Desmond, Silgo? They're not. Okay, so they they would actually make a good. If I can get an alliance with Kildare and an alliance with Thomond, I think they will be my allies. Um, my primary allies in the conquest of Ireland. You know, until it's time to annex them as well. Oh, is that, is that, uh, oh, Richard York, there we go. The Yorkists have risen up. We now can't do anything because they occupied all of our provinces, but, uh, no, we're not taking any separate piece that you offer us. They've sunk all of our boats. Sweden's building a spy network. 
let's go ahead and adopt the wooden wall. So we don't have anything else to do with our money at this point, I guess, except save it up to pay off some loans. Nope, we're not uh, not taking any peace offers. Bankruptcy looming. Uh, how, how, how do you figure that? How do you figure that? We're losing 39.3 each month. We're making money. Okay, there we go. Sharing faults. Some say King James II is a crude man. While he certainly has his good sides as well, away with words is not something a ruler is known for. However, observing the king with his wife in attendance, it seems that the couple has found common ground in this diplomatic shortcoming. There appears to be a feeling of mutual affection growing between the royals due to their shared awkwardness. Oh yeah, does that cause my war exhaustion to go up every time I decline that? Okay, there we go. French-English Unification War. Provence accepted peace from... England, okay. Nope. Yeah, so we're gonna have we're gonna have a lot of rebellions to deal with <laughs> if France doesn't peace out of this soon. Really wish they would just peace out. Really wish that they would just peace out of the war. Yeah. It's over. Like, the war is over. I don't know what else you're expect. I don't know if you're expecting me to do something. Like, I I'm I I'm out of, out of options. Unless you can come liberate one of my provinces and let me build up a new army. Royal marriage. They don't want it. Portugal. Oh, no, wait. I was going to go after Irish miners first. Cool. Get a royal marriage with Kildare going here. Hey, it's the Renaissance. Which will not be felt in Scotland for quite some time. We're per currently under something of a military occupation. Oh, for alliance, cool, great. Spare no expense, you know what? You guys want a royal marriage? Not yet. Yeah, we're going to end up going way into... Okay, there we go. Uh, England will cede all these provinces to France. Um, we get 5.7 prestige, no land. Um... Cool. France owes us favors. Alright, so not too bad. That's not the worst thing that could have happened. Increase our trust here. Uh, and... England is getting fucked up by rebels, which is great. That should give us time to rebuild our army. Which, uh... Actually, we're going to pay off our loans first. And then we're going to rebuild our army. Yeah, fabricating claims on our shit. That's exactly what I'd expect. France has revoked their guarantee, but we are still allies. So, hopefully, things will be okay. 